Good morning and welcome to WWDC. It's here that we bring some of our biggest innovations to life. To start, I want to address the topic of racism, inequality, and injustice, and to recognize the pain being felt throughout our nation, especially in our black and brown communities after the senseless killing of George Floyd. Two weeks ago, we announced Apple's Racial Equity and Justice Initiative with a commitment of $100 million. We also announced something important for this community, the new Developer Entrepreneur Camp for Black developers. Right now, our world is also battling a virus that is affecting the daily lives of billions of people. We want to thank the dedicated people everywhere, especially our healthcare workers who have made tremendous sacrifices to take care of those in need. Today, we're going to push each of our platforms forward in some exciting and breakthrough ways. So let's get started with iOS. Our new release is iOS 14. Wouldn't it be great if there were a way to organize all of those apps without doing a thing? Well, this year we're doing just that with something called the App Library. It's a new space at the end of your home screen pages that automatically organizes all your apps in one simple and easy to navigate view. So here in App Library, getting to the app I'm looking for is really easy. Up at the top, I have the search field, and I get all my apps organized from A to Z. Now over here on the upper left, I have suggestions. It uses on-device intelligence to show me the apps that I'm likely to need next. And on the right is recently added. And below are intelligently curated categories. Next, let's turn to widgets. To start, they're more beautiful and data rich and we're introducing different sizes, so you can choose one that best fits your needs. So check this out. I'm just gonna tap and hold on the weather widget, and I can drag it out of today view and onto my home screen. And watch, as I move it around, the apps just dance out of the way to make space for my new widget. The gallery is a great place to explore widgets. Now, when I tap on one, I can actually page through all of the different sizes available. With the Smart Stack, I can easily swipe through widgets to pick just the one I want for the moment. But what's really cool is that the Smart Stack can actually do this for me automatically. So in the morning, I can get my news briefing. Throughout the day, find out when I have a meeting coming up. And in the evening, I might get a summary of my activity for the day. Next, we're also bringing picture in picture to iPhone. So you can access apps on your iPhone while watching video or talking on a FaceTime call. Now check this out. When I swipe to go home, the video automatically goes into picture in picture right over the home screen. And when I launch another app, like Notes, I can keep watching. Now I can drag the picture to another part of the screen. If I wanna make it bigger, I can even pinch to zoom. And as I move between applications, it stays with me. And what's cool is I can also swipe it to the side and the audio keeps playing when it's off screen. Another iconic experience that's getting a major update is Siri. So this year, we've completely redesigned the Siri experience with a new compact design. Siri pops up at the bottom of the screen and instantly launches the app. Or if you ask for information, like the weather, results appear at the top of the screen, just like a notification. Siri's always been great for getting information and now has over 20 times more facts than just three years ago. This year, you can now ask Siri to send an audio message and Siri will start recording. When communicating with someone in another language, Siri can help with translations. This year, we're expanding to support many new language pairs. We're introducing a new app called Translate. It can work completely offline, keeping your conversations private. Using advanced on-device machine learning and the powerful neural engine, you can translate your text and voice between any combination of these 11 languages. And just turn the phone to landscape to open conversation mode. We've designed a side-by-side -side view that's easy for two people to know which side to follow in the conversation, with just a single microphone button because the app intelligently detects the language spoken and shows translation on the correct side of the screen. Next up, messages. Let's get started with conversations. So we are introducing a new way to let you stay connected to your most important conversations by letting you pin them at the top of your list so you can always get to them. And you can see messages as they come in with a beautiful animation on the pin. Next, let's talk about expressing yourself with Memoji. In iOS 14, we're adding even more ways to create your look with 
over 20 new hair and headwear styles to let you reflect your hobby, profession, and personality. We've also added something that's even more relevant today, face coverings. And we're adding more age options too. And now we have three brand new Memoji stickers that let you send a hug, a fist bump, or even a blush to your friends. Last, let's chat about groups. First, we're adding inline replies that let you reply directly to a specific message. You can view replies in the full conversation, or you can view them as their own thread so you can focus in on the specific topic. With mentions, you can just type someone's name to direct a message to them. And now you have the ability to only be notified when you're mentioned in the group conversation. We have an all new design for how groups appear. It lets you see all the members of your group where the most recently active people are shown largest. And for the first time ever, you can create a unique visual identity for your group by setting a group photo or customizing your group's look with an emoji. You know who's most recently commented in the group because their photo will appear around the outside of the pin. Next, let's take a look at features that help us while we're out and about, starting with maps. We're excited to announce we're bringing our new map to more countries later this year, including the UK, Ireland, and Canada. In iOS 14, the Maps team will be working with some of the world's most trusted brands to offer amazing guides. Guides for great places to eat, shop, meet friends, or explore in cities around the world. We're adding a dedicated cycling option to Maps, which allows users to ride their bike along bike lanes, paths, and roads. We'll even let you know if you have a steep passage coming up or if you'll need to carry your bike up the stairs. With iOS 14, we're bringing cycling to New York City, LA, the San Francisco Bay Area, along with a number of cities in China, like Shanghai and Beijing. We're also introducing EV routing. With iOS 14, Maps will track your current charge and factor in things like elevation and weather to automatically add charging stops along your route. We're adding congestion and green zones to Maps to easily see where they are, along with alternate routing options. In addition, drivers in China can securely store their license plate number on their iPhone and Maps will let them know which days they can enter congested city centers based on that number. And now, on to CarPlay. We have new wallpaper options and we're adding support for new categories of CarPlay apps, parking, EV charging, and quick food ordering. I'm excited to introduce a digital version of Car Keys. Now you can leave your keys at home and unlock and start your car with your iPhone. And the very first car to support this will be the new 2021 BMW 5 Series. Digital keys have security benefits. They live in the secure element of your iPhone. And if it goes missing, you can turn off your keys remotely via iCloud. And you can share from wherever you are with iMessage. Now, let's turn to the App Store. An app clip is a small part of an app. It's light and fast and easy to discover so you can quickly get what you need right when you need it. They start with this card, which quickly pops up, and with just a tap, you can launch the app clip. The best way to discover app clips will be with a new Apple-designed app clip code. So when you see one, you'll know that there's an app clip waiting for you. They incorporate both a visual code and NFC, so you tap on them or scan them with the camera to bring up an app clip. And that's iOS 14. Let's take a look at some of the enhancements to iPad OS. The first thing that you'll notice are the same redesigned widgets that you saw in iOS 14. And this year, we're making it even easier to browse and organize your photos with an all new sidebar. With just a tap of this button, I can reveal the sidebar with all the core functionality of the app in a single location. I can easily drag a photo to the sidebar and then just drop it to add it to an album. We've brought this sidebar to many apps across iPad OS. We've also streamlined the toolbars adding new drop-down menus that consolidate functions into a single easy-to-access button. The sidebar in music makes it easy to move between views. I can quickly jump between the new Listen Now and my playlists. And once I start playing a song, I can bring up the brand new full-screen player where I can see rich album art, transport controls, and lyrics all in one single view. The new compact Siri design that you heard about in iOS 14 is especially useful on iPad. Results appear at the bottom right corner, allowing you to easily reference the app while using Siri. Now an incoming call is presented with a compact notification that doesn't take you out of context. And you can simply tap to answer or flick it away to dismiss. So we've redesigned search with a new compact design. 
You can start a search from anywhere, like the home screen or over any app. And Search now makes navigating to your favorite websites just as easy as launching an app. Just type a few letters and the top hit will take you right to Safari. Our customers tell us that once they have an Apple Pencil in their hand, they don't want to put it away. So this year, we're bringing Scribble to iPad. So you can handwrite into any text field and it will automatically be converted to text. Next, let's talk about AirPods. We have some amazing updates coming to AirPods, starting with automatic switching. AirPods will now seamlessly move between your devices without you having to manually switch them. We also have an exciting new feature coming to AirPods Pro, spatial audio. By applying directional audio filters and subtly adjusting the frequencies each ear receives, we can place sounds virtually anywhere in space, creating an immersive surround sound experience. Spatial audio for AirPods Pro will work with content encoded in 5.1, 7.1, and even Dolby Atmos. Until today, an app could appear at only one spot at a time on a watch face. In watchOS 7, developers can enable multiple complications, making even more richly personal watch faces. We're also bringing rich complications to more faces, including a fresh chronograph face with an integrated tachymeter and an updated extra large face with a huge rich complication right in the center. And configuring watch faces has been redesigned so you can easily select which information you'd like to see. We're introducing face sharing. You'll be able to discover curated faces with third-party apps on the App Store, or discover a new favorite watch face right on a website, or receive watch faces directly from friends and family. And now in watchOS, just like in iOS 14, you can get cycling directions. The workout app uses algorithms that are smartly tuned to track all aspects of your training. And in watchOS 7, we're adding dance. WatchOS 7 also tracks accurate calories for core training, those exercises for your abs and back. Functional strength training, a workout type that helps you get stronger and move better for everyday activities. And also cool downs. Of course, you can track your progress for any of these new workouts inside the activity app on iPhone, which is completely redesigned in watchOS 7. The app is getting a new name as well. Fitness. We're going to be adding even more capabilities this year in watchOS 7. Tracking your sleep. That starts with choosing not only when you would like to wake up in the morning, but also when you'd like to go to bed. So we are offering Wind Down. It can help you get to bed on time by minimizing distractions and creating a personalized routine. Once it's time for bed, your screen will dim and your watch will go into sleep mode, which looks like this. The screen will be off during time in bed, so it won't bother you, and a tap displays this simple face. When it's time to wake up, you have a selection of gentle and effective alarm sounds or a silent haptic only wake up alarm so you don't disturb your partner. Once you're up, you'll see a friendly greeting easing you into the day. Apple Watch tracks your sleep using a machine learning model that senses your motion and even interprets the micro movements caused by the rise and fall of your breath. There's an updated sleep section in the health app, including a view of your trends over time. Sleep schedules, wind down, and sleep mode are also available on iPhone without a watch in iOS 14. In watchOS 7, Apple Watch is the first watch to deliver automatic detection when you start washing your hands and sensing of how long you actually wash. Privacy matters now more than ever. One thing we hear a lot with signing with Apple is that people wish they could convert their existing accounts to use it. When you upgrade, you get the ease of use and built-in security of signing with Apple while keeping the account that you already have. This year, we're continuing to give you even more control. In addition to the option of sharing your precise location, you'll have the option to only share your approximate location with apps. We're also making changes for mic and camera, so you always know when you're recording. In addition to requiring your permission this year, we're adding more visibility for current or recent mic or camera use. So if an app uses either one, we'll indicate that in the status bar. So moving forward, App Store policy will require apps to ask before tracking you across apps and websites owned by other companies. We're going to require each developer to self-report their practices. We'll show you what they tell us. You can see if a developer is collecting a little bit of data on you or a lot of data, or if they're sharing data with other companies to track you, and much more. We're going to put this information on product pages in the App Store. So for each app, you can see highlights of their privacy information before you download it. Now, let's talk about some big changes coming 
to Mac OS. Our next release of Mac OS is Mac OS Big Sur. Let's start with the dock. It has an elegant new design that floats along the bottom of your desktop. Let's take a look at the Finder. You'll notice it has a gorgeous new top to bottom design for the sidebar, and it has a compact, space efficient toolbar. Next, let's take a look at Mail. You can see that Mail has all new glyphs in the sidebar. Next, let's take a look at Photos. It's just stunning. You can get to all your albums and media types from the sidebar, and the photo grid is backed by metal. Now, we've refreshed the design for all the apps on the system, from apps like Calendar and Notes to Podcasts and Music. With, you may have noticed we've also updated the menu bar. It's now translucent and elegantly takes on the color of your desktop picture. And we've updated the layout of menus as well. We've given all the items just a little bit more room to breathe. We've brought Control Center to the Mac. Now, we've also reinvented Notification Center. You can access it by clicking on the time in the upper right. And as you see, we now have a single view that brings your notifications and widgets together all in one place. And we now group related notifications together, and we're bringing our redesigned widgets to the Mac. Let's talk about messages. We're introducing powerful search to help you find what you're looking for. We have a redesigned photo picker to make sharing photos and videos easier. And Memoji. You can now create and edit your Memoji right on your Mac. Messages effects helps you celebrate special moments and get your point across. And you're also getting pin conversations that are synced across devices so you can always get to them, along with new groups enhancements. Next up, Maps. To start, Maps features a stunning new design. And for the first time on the Mac, Favorites. You can now create your own guides of all the places you want to visit right on your Mac. In addition to monitoring unwanted tracking, Safari now also securely monitors your saved passwords. We're adding support for the Web Extensions API, so developers can easily bring over extensions that they built for other browsers. In Safari, you choose which sites each extension can work with. And you can even give them access just for the day, just for the website, or all the time. We have a whole slew of new features this year, from a customizable start page to redesign tabs that are more elegant and powerful, and native translation capabilities built right into Safari. Today, we're going to tell you about some really big changes, how we're going to take the Mac to a whole new level. Today is the day we're announcing that the Mac is transitioning to our own Apple Silicon. So, of course, when we updated our apps for Big Sur, we built everything as native for Apple Silicon. Microsoft is hard at work on Office for the Mac. And we've been working with Adobe on their flagship Creative Cloud, and many of their apps are already up and running great. We expect to ship our first Mac with Apple Silicon by the end of this year, and we expect the transition to take about two years. We plan to continue to support and release new versions of macOS for Intel-based Macs for years to come. In fact, we have some new Intel-based Macs in the pipeline that we're really excited about. Our OS releases will be available as developer betas today, and each of them will have a public beta, including watchOS for the very first time starting next month. 